All right, let's jump on over to this week's episode of AEW Dynamite. Uh, Philip, like always, let's start out big, give our initial thoughts, and work our way through the show. So, uh, yeah, your uh, initial takeaways. Man, what the hell was this? <laughs> what in the world was this? I mean, you get... Sting coming out there. Oh, I'm just going to talk. I'm not going to hit anybody with a bat today. Yeah. Old ass. But, man, like, I, <laughs> you, you, do, I, like really, I'm, I'm kind of upset, man. You know, I, I, I love AEW. I was at double or nothing. There was a revolution going on, baby Huey. I felt change. I felt change. I really did. You know, they debuted a new championship. It wasn't green. You know, I thought really great things were going to happen. The pandemic hit. That's not their fault. That's not their fault. Mm-hmm. You no, know, they carried on a little better than WWE for a majority of, of 2020. But, you know, I, I expect them to at least have some good things on this show. You know, come on, man. Come on. I mean, like, I'm, I'm looking down the card. You know, uh, Peter Avalon taps out because he doesn't want to get hit. I, I get it. He's pretty, you know, whatever. I think the best thing was the FTR and Jurassic Express promo. <laughs> yeah, it this. <sighs> I wonder, like, okay. So I saw the preview or what the matches were announced for this show, Dynamite, and I was like, this is it. It wasn't like the most star studded or action packed show, like with anticipation I was looking forward to. I kind of wonder if AEW kind kind of had this show written off because they knew so many people were going to be watching the news tonight. It's inauguration day. So a lot of people are going to be watching the different news outlets and seeing what's going on from the party and just the recap from what happened this morning. So I just wonder if if AEW and maybe even NXT thought, you know, what we're, we're going to get beat very bad in the ratings. We know it's going to be an L. So let's not go ahead and put our best show out there and save it for the coming weeks. That's kind of I wonder the mindset is for that. But if this was not a great show. Like mostly it was just the wrestling. The wrestling was just not that good. And not no one in particular, but it was a multiple matches where I just felt there was a lot of botches. Things were not looking very smooth or crisp in the, the ring. The show cut off. And you know, like yeah. while they're talking, I'm like, Well, we gotta have crisp we gotta have crisp time, you know? You know, that's why you that's why match should end at like seventh or 657, 658, so yeah. we can know what a little bit is going to happen. You know, JR said, stay with the And then, you know, he just cut off. Like, what is this? He just faded to black. I missed the ending. Honestly, I turned. I was eating dinner. I turned my head because I was, like, done. And I, I, I looked back and I was like, it was done. I was like, what? Like, the screen went black. I was like, oh, my God, I missed the finish. Like, I'm, I, I, I was like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> like you were, you were eating dinner. What'd you have? <laughs> Panda Express. <laughs> oh, Walnut shrimp? No, I went orange chicken and teriyaki chicken and chow mein. Oh, oh, the shrimp the, is good, man, dude. It's, it, whoo, make <laughs> you want to slap your mama. I know. It's so good. So good. But no, but Philip, I'm with you, man. This was not a really good show. Um, let's just jump into it. We can kind of break it all down. I enjoyed this opening segment, though. It was the kickoff show or a, a match uh, celebrating Brody, Brody Lee Jr., a.k.a. Negative one of the Dark Order. It's his birthday. I thought that was very cool that they went all out for his birthday for him. And uh, it was a six-man tag match. Um, Alex Reynolds and uh, 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 Cole Cabana. And, oh, and John Silver. So wait, was it? It was four on four, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was It was a four on four. Like yeah, when he's okay. a four for four. Their website um, needs to update this. It said six man. Yeah, it's eight man. Uh, but yeah, Hangman Adam Page, Dark Order, and taking on and Helico. Jack Evans and the Chaos Project, Luther and, and uh, 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 Serpentico. Yeah, uh, I, I like it, be- it was okay. It was okay. The match was okay, but I mean, I like the beginning where uh, 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 Luther comes out. He's talking to Negative One, and I like that they let Negative One get involved in this and was like talking back to him. So they really made Negative One part this part of the show. I thought that was really cute and it was really fun for him for his birthday. They had the birthday cake out there. The match itself was okay. Hangman Adam Page. Great, you know, uh, I flip off the top ropes to the people outside. But I think from that point on, he looked really tired. He looked gassed as far as there were some other spots where like he couldn't lift up the guys and he looked really tired. So, like I said, that's an example where like things start getting kind of botchy in this match a little bit. I did like the finish where it was the uh, uh, 
Oh my God. Let's see. Page hit the buckshot with Reynolds there to grab uh, the German suplex combo and then uh, the pin on Serpentico. The finish I, was clean. I, I yeah, did I like, like that. that. I like that. Uh, but the big thing was after the match, okay, match was done. They asked uh, Hangman Adam Page if you want to join the Dark Order. And he said, I can't. Uh, I don't. I can't. He says I don't want to be part of a group again right now. And then during that, in the background, you see the other members of Dark Order. They were they had the big celebration sign ready. He said he said yes, and they were like telling people to go away. Uh, and then Hangman, you know, looks sad again. Grabbed a bottle of, uh, of Jack Daniels whiskey and walked off. No, but did you notice he exited through the heel side? Yeah. So I don't know, man. What do you think about? I mean, Dark Order. You know. With the unfortunate passing passing of um, uh, Brody, Brody Lee, Lee, Dark War has been being booked as a baby face now. So it's safe to say, based on their presentation, the way they act in the ring, they are total baby faces now. But what do you think about Hangman Adam Page rejecting them and doesn't want to be part of a, a team again? He wants to do his own thing. I understand that, man. I mean, he was doing his own thing and Ring of Honor wasn't really working out. He joins Bullet Club and he becomes elite and... It, it, you know, leaves Bullet Club with the elite, leaves the elite, gets kicked out. He wants to find it himself. That's that's fine. You know, I'm okay with that. You know, well, just, I, I can't, can't wait to see what happens. And I, I'm all for him being by himself. I think I've said this before. I really think he could be like the Stone Cold of this uh, division of AEW, like the the badass lone wolf who goes around kicking ass. I want to see more of that again. So maybe we'll, we'll get more of that. But uh, so, yeah, I'm curious. Uh, what's the fallout from his decision? What's uh, Dark Order going to do in retaliation for that kind of, you know, almost being embarrassed on live TV? So uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, next up, we saw Alex Marvez backstage with MJF and Chris Jericho. I'm talking about the main event for the show. Uh you know, it's just teasing the main event. It is what it is. Um, next up, the segment I'm with you was uh, a little just boring. Uh, a little bit of a, a disappointment it was Tony Schiavone uh, introducing TNT champion Darby Allen and then Sting. Dude, <laughs> they bring Sting out there, hands on the microphone. He congratulates Darby Allen for winning his match last week against Brian Cage to retain the championship. And that was it. And then we see a video package of Team Taz in the back calling them out and they want, you know, payback and they want to take it to the streets and they, Darby Allen accepts the challenge and says, be careful what you wish for. I, oh man. Hey, them saying they want to take it to the streets was probably my favorite thing of the show. <laughs> You want to take it to the streets? I grew up in the streets. I'm from the streets. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, come on, Taz. Like, we all know you belong to the streets. <laughs> my my thing is, it's like, okay, Sting, and we talked about this the last couple of weeks. They keep bringing about every week for these quick little segments. He doesn't do much. He doesn't say much. And we're barely learning what his motivation is. The only thing I've been able to gather is, okay, he's like a mentor for Darby Allen but hasn't really done much. And they keep bringing him out every week for a pop. That's like, okay, like I'm already getting kind of burnt out on sting because I like, now I'm at the point where they tease sting is going to be on the show. He's going to, I'm at the point where it's like, I'm not super excited to see sting anymore because we know he's just going to come out, say a few words and then get interrupted. So I'm like, you got to give me more or don't show sting as much. Maybe once every other week, or if you're going to bring them on every week, make it impactful. Make it worth my time. Uh, but I don't know about you, Philip. Are, are you getting kind of burnt out with Sting's presence so far? Dude, look, man. I mean, I'm 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 not happy with 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 uh with Stinger right now, you know. Yeah. No, I'm going to I'm going to shoot, brother. I'm not happy with you, Steve. <laughs> I'm not happy at all. You know what? You come out here with your bat. Look, this is all he does. This is why we need to do video. Comes out here with his bat. He points it. He points it. All right, you good? You good? All right, man. And he just walks back to the back. I'm, I'm sick of it, you know? Yeah. And, like, taking it to the streets, I guarantee you sting. No, Steve, I guarantee you've never been to the street to Daniel. Life. Okay? <laughs> exactly. All right? So I guess we're going to have some kind of street fight, some kind of cinematic match. That way we protect Steve. <laughs> You know, yeah, that, that might like, be a good bro, idea. Terry Funk was having hardcore death matches when he was like sixty-five. You're sixty-one. You, I think you can take one bump, my guy. Come on, I'm come just, on. It's like I was so happy. What six weeks ago or seven weeks ago when he made his debut? Now I'm feels all right. like a lot longer than that, right? I mean, that's the thing though. It's like okay, he's 
here he is. Every week he comes out, points a bat, stares someone down, and that's it. And it's like, dude, you got to give me more than that. If not, keep him off TV until you have something better lined up for him. That's all I got to say. All right, next up, a match that, oh, man, I was super bummed about. It just, not that good. So uh, uh, American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes taking on pretty Peter Avalon. Dude, this match was just not that good. Like, Peter Avalon, I know he's mostly on Dark a lot. And I think he does some behind-the-scenes stuff for AEW. But, dude, this match it, was just not that it, good. Is he no longer the librarian? We're done with that. So, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. For anyone who maybe doesn't remember him, he was the librarian, what, a year, year and a half ago. Uh, but he kind of changed it. I, from what I've been able to gather, he's changed his gimmick to pretty Peter Avalon, almost like a, a wannabe ravishing Rick Rude. But since he's much smaller and skinnier, it kind of makes it that much more funny, campy look to it. But, dude, this match is just like they couldn't get like into a good groove. Even the, the finish itself. But even Jay Cargill came out and stared down Cody and distracted him while Peter came up and gave him a low blow. Philip, like my thing is like, what? Where are we going with this Jay Jay Cargill storyline with Cody Rhodes? Jay can't take on Brandy now because Brandy's pregnant. I doubt Shaq is gonna come and actually wrestle Cody, just because now NBA season's here. NBA on TNT, he's busy with that. So what's gonna lead to between Jade and Cody? I just feel like. It's just kind of an odd story that that seems kind of, I don't know what direction they're trying to go with. So we can do a couple things. Um, Brandy could wrestle, you know, Paige's mom wrestled while she was seven months pregnant. Uh, We could (laughs) could do that. Um, You know, Shaq coming on to TNT, you know, it's a nice little, or AEW, it's a nice little crossover for TNT and basketball, whatever. Uh, Do I want to see him have a match? Oh, God, no. Jesus, no. Hell no. Let's do, (laughs) let's do Cody versus Jade. Let's do that. I mean, she is in (laughs) really tip top shape. She, she looks phenomenal. I'm sorry, AJ, but she's in peak. She has a peak physique. Mm -hmm. It's magnifique. You know? That, but do you think Cody would actually put her over? Like, I mean, I don't know how how can that end in a way that's beneficial for both parties involved in that match. She can look dominant as hell, but my my man Coaster gets the win. <laughs> no, let's not let's let's not do that. No, I, I take that back. There's gonna be too many problems. Let's not do yeah, that. Yeah. Let's not do that. Um, yeah. It's like, you, have to, I, you, you have to find somebody that's worthy to face her. Yeah. I, um, but then the, the finish it's so she walks off. Cody and Peter go at it a little bit more. Cody locks Peter into a figure four leg lock. Um, Avalon wasn't able to reverse it, so Cody turned it back around and threatened to slap pretty Peter in the face. And Avalon tapped out before Cody can do it because, you know, he didn't want to get hit in the face. So a really just bad finish. You could tell Cody's body language. He probably knew this wasn't a good match. So uh, the less more, we, the less that we talk about this, probably for the better. So it's over with. I, I, even when they announced this match, I was like, "Why is Cody taking on this guy? It's such a random matchup." I feel like this guy's way below Cody's league as far as where Cody's place in the company. It's like, what's the point of this? If anything, it looked like it was just to kind of get Jade involved more into Cody's storyline or, or in you know, caught up in his matches. Anyway, I'm I'm just kind of frustrated. It's like, where is this going of any sort of value? Uh, next up, we saw a backstage segment segment with FTR, Tully Blanchard. Uh, Jurassic Express comes in to interrupt him. And Jungle Boy, dude, I give him credit. He uh, took control of this situation and was the, doing the majority of the talking and says he could take on any one of the of FTR guys. So uh, Dax Harwood agrees to a match with them next week. Uh I'm actually kind of happy because uh, Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, Phil, we don't see him talk a lot. I, usually uh, Luchasaurus or Marco Stunt does the majority of the talking. So for Jack Perry, I mean, I know they have big plans for Jungle Boy. Like, I think everyone likes him and see big things with him long term. I think for the time being, Jurassic Express is good for him just to be part of a faction, get people, let people get comfortable with him in the ring, get used to knowing him. But eventually, I think they want to push him as a big singles star. And they've really been building him over the last year like an underdog, taking on bigger guys, trying to overcome the odds. So I think long term, they want to do big things with him. I wonder if this is the beginning of that singles push. And 
the, the fact that he was doing the majority of this talking, I was kind of like, finally, like he's got to start talking on his own if he really wants to have a big singles run here. So what do you think about this matchup against Dark's, uh, Dark's, Dax Hardwood next week? I think it's going to be very good. Um, oh, I don't know who should win, though. That's That's my thing. I could see. I mean, okay, they beat up Marco Stunt pretty easily, so I can maybe. I hope it's not maybe fifty fifty booking, but I would think Dax should win. But I, I mean, I think Jungle Boy comes pretty damn close, but he doesn't get the job done. Exactly. So, uh, and maybe leads to a tag match at some point. Uh, next up, uh, John Moxley made his big AEW Dynamite return after first time back on in the ring since he lost the title of Kenny Omega at a Winter's Winter is Coming. <laughs> He wrestled with Nick Commando, Commando. <laughs> Nick uh, Camarata. Camarata. Camarato. Dude, that guy, like, I, if you follow uh, Kip Sabi and Sammy Guevara, they have a, a YouTube channel together, and he was the latest guest this week. They were having some fun with him. He's mostly on AEW Dark. Uh, I like his look. He has that old school, like, big hairy dude, like, from the old territory days. I like his look. He's like that old school, like monster looking. Uh, I hope AEW keeps him around for uh, for other stuff. Um, but seeing him, I was like, okay, is this going to be like a squash match for John Moxley? But dude, I was kind of surprised. Uh, Nick got a lot of offense in, so I don't know, man. I was kind of a little bit taken back. I was like, John Moxley. I know he's been out of the ring for what six weeks on Dynamite. But it's like, okay, you're the former world champion, and you're letting this jabroni get a lot of offense in. That really kind of turned me off a little bit. It's like I, I thought Moxie was going to win in more dominant fashion. Honestly, I thought the bell was going to ring, and he was just going to drop him with a dirty or a paradigm shift. I'm sorry. Exactly. So I was really surprised how much offense got in Nick got in on Moxley, and so I don't know, man. Like I, I don't think it's such a strong look from Moxley. It's like. You, you want to rebuild him up and maybe get maybe get that rematch against Kenny Omega at Revolution if that's what the plan is, just hypothetically speaking. You got to make him look a more, more, more dominant. And so this first match back, not a good look, man, for Moxley's sake. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, next, uh, we saw Dasha backstage with A. Kingston along with Butcher and the Blade and Bunny. Um, and then we're talking about his match next week against Lance Archer. Uh, Lance Archer comes in and they have a little back and forth. Jake the Snake gets in his face. So it's just building up some, uh, you know, uh, uh, heat for their match next week. So who do you think is going to win that one? Um, bro, can we just see? Like, I don't even care who wins. Can I just see Jake Roberts drop a DDT? I want like, him to so bad. Just, just like Arn can still drop a spine buster, but just yeah. just give me one, bro. That's all I, I need. I know. All I, I love need is that one. Too. Yeah, all I, I know, is- man. I know, but I'd love to see that as well. Uh, let's see, a couple more things for the match. So uh, for the show wrapped up, uh, we see Alex Marvez uh, talking to Kenny Omega about uh, what happened earlier in the day. Oh, that's what we got to mention. So there was that uh, video. Uh, looked like the Young Bucks went to Kenny Omega's house. Well, I, I, Alex Marvez is a stalker at this point. Like it's <laughs> I think not even paparazzi. Point. He is a full blown stalker. He just <laughs> happened to be at Kenny Omega's house with a camera. Like, what, what were they doing? What were they doing? I think you know they want him to be like their mean gene, but he's taking it to a whole new level as no. far as paparazzi style, of trying to follow AEW's talent outside of uh, Daily's place. But yeah, the video package. Before I forget, so Young Bucks show up to Kenny Omega's house to, for a meeting, and uh, Michael Nakusawa opens the door, says, "Come on in." take him in the other room and Don Callis is there and they're talking to Don Callis and there's a painting on the wall, an oil painting of Kenny Omega and Don Callis shirtless. That's kind of, kind of weird. And then, uh, uh, the cameraman, Don Callis tells the cameraman to go away. So Michael Nakusawa takes him out. Don Callis puts the camera down on the couch, obviously nicely planted in front of the young bucks and Don Callis. And Don Callis pretty much tells him, uh, to go away, to tell the young bucks to go away. We're like, you know, they try to say, oh, Kenny's changed his cell phone because um, ever since he's won the title, a lot of people have been hitting him up. And so he's trying to like cut out all the like outside world, these people that the, that shouldn't be in his life right now as the world champion. So they changed his phone phone number. Also, uh, Don Cowles, you know, he's trying to really control who gets to see Kenny. So really like a hands-on manager, he's really kind of trying to take control of Kenny Omega's life. And so he tried to buy off the Young Bucks. He says, how much can I give you? He, tried, he wrote off a check and said, here, let me give you this, you know, 
stay away from Kenny Omega more or less. And the Young Bucks were like, dude, we made this last week, this amount. And they're like, okay, I know you guys sell a lot of merch. Let me give you this check. So what do you think about that whole segment of uh, Don Callis very much heel like trying to be the evil manager and control who gets to see Kenny Omega and trying to buy off the Young Bucks from seeing him? I don't know, man. I actually kind of like that. Maybe I need to hit up Don Callis. Too many people have access to me. Um, <laughs> Cut them all off. It's, it's and not not all of them. Just those that are in my inner circle. See yeah, what yeah, I did there? yeah. I see what you uh, did there. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I, th- I thought it was different. And then what happened to his face? Because we see him later on in the night. So that's what it was. So uh, we see Alex Marvez uh, with Kenny Omega, and they're talking about early today in the video, and they're walking, and they see Don Callis. Don Callis. He has the sunglasses on, and Kenny knows that uh, uh, Don Callis has a black eye, and he's like, "Who did this? We'll get them." And he's like, "Ah!" Uh, and he ran it. He said, "Oh, it's the Young Bucks. They did this to me." He's like, "What?" So, you know, Young Bucks were mad earlier in the day, saying, "Hey, you told us we we're going to be in the match with Kenny, but yet the Good Brothers come out." And now it makes you wonder, Don Callis as the Invisible Hand, the uh, uh, Master Puppets, the puppeteer here. He's really trying to control the narrative, and I think he's trying to brainwash or set up Kenny and make him think. I, I, if I had to guess, the black guy is maybe fake and trying to create the impression that the Young Bucks beat him up, but really just he's lying. So that way, Kenny, he's manipulating Kenny and make him think that he, he should not uh, distance himself from the Young Bucks and focus on being with the Good Brothers. So I think ultimately that's what's happening here. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see how this plays out. Um, next up, we saw uh, Matt Hardy and Private Party taking on Isaiah, Ka- or excuse me, uh, Matt Seidel on Top Flight. Um, good match here. I... You know, it was a lot of high flying here, both two young tag teams. Um, I think towards the end, it started getting a little, little, uh, especially top flight, things were not hitting crisp, like I mentioned earlier, a little botchy, not completely smooth. Uh, But towards the end, we see Private Party use a chair to get the victory. And then afterwards, Top Flight were confronting them and Private Party got in their face and started beating the crap out of them after the bell, after Private Party wins. So, and they start feeding them to Matt Hardy to hit his finisher on them. So, is Private Party full blown heel now? Um, I have I've I've talked to Isaiah Cassidy. They are heel confirmed. Man, I don't know. How do you feel about this? I mean, part of me think it's kind of cool because then it can kind of give them a little bit of an edge now. I mean, I mean, their gimmick is already kind of healers. Like, you have a VIP section. I can't come in. You got you got that nice gray goose and cranberry. You're getting Lucy with the goosey, and I can't come have a nice. <laughs> I can't come have a nice drink. No, absolutely not. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard you saying, man. So, um, I, I, I want to give the benefit of the doubt that this heel turn be good for them, just because, like I mentioned this before, you know, you got Top Flight, you got the Acclaim, you got a lot of other young tag teams coming in, and Private Party were there first over a year ago. I think this will be good to kind of freshen up their characters a little bit and maybe make them stand out again, especially. You know, now they have the storyline over in Impact Wrestling. So I think this would be great for them getting crossover appeal over on Impact and AEW audience. Put both titles on them. Dude, that would be pretty sweet. Too sweet. Yeah. So, I, I- <laughs> so uh, it'd be cool, man. Uh, next up, we saw uh, Layla Hirsch take on Penelope before. It was supposed to be Nyla Rose, but Nyla Rose is quarantined because she was in contact with someone who had COVID. Um, this match was. Like I felt like the first half of this match, they they were on the same page. They were trying to like figure out what to do, and they both were not commu- miscommunicating. Just was not very smooth. Layla Hirsch, I like her. She has spunk. You know, there's yeah. something about her. She she could have it. Yeah. You know, but uh, Miro was a part of the segment, so I don't care. <laughs> so ultimately, uh, 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 Penelope Ford gets the win um, after uh, um, who was it? Uh, Kip Sabian, right? Yeah, held down Layla's ankle and uh, got the win. We also saw, uh, yeah, as you said, Miro come out there with Kip Sabian. Also, uh, Miro's new young boy slash butler, Charles Taylor, a.k.a. Chuck Taylor from The Best Friend. Orange Cassidy was singing or sitting in the crowd, just you know, observing uh, of his former best friend or current best friend, whatever you want to call it. Um, anyway, Miro gets on the microphone. I like what he said. He told uh, the girl, he told... Uh, Layla Hirsch, get out of the ring, get out. And the crowd started booing. He's like, don't boo me. 
But I, I thought that was pretty funny. He was like telling her, get out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he made Charles Taylor grab the microphone and tell Orange Cassidy that Miro is his new best friend. And he did it reluctantly. So uh, it looks like, yeah, we're going to be seeing more. I would like to see more vignettes. I go, okay, it was cool to see him come out to the ring in a butler suit. But I want to see more vignettes, like a day of, uh, of them working together. So maybe like next week's episode, like vignettes of them, like, you know, throughout the episode of Dynamite next week of like, oh, let's go to the grocery store and make him do all these different errands and really, you know, sell the young boy aspect of yeah, it. So, yeah, and then and then Miro could be like, put your mask on. <laughs> yeah. So that, Imbecile. That's what, I, like, OK, come in ringside's one thing. And this is just one segment. But give me some vignette of Miro putting Charles Taylor to work as a young boy slash butler. I don't know if I want to see that much Miro. Bro. <laughs> If Penelope Ford's in them, then it'll make it somewhat better. Yeah. Dude, if they play her cards right, she could be like the Trish Stratus of the AEW's women's division. <laughs> right? I mean, I think she could really be the face of that women's division if she gets more time to grow. I, I really think she can be a star for them. Absolutely. I mean, she's so bad. Yeah. So bad. <laughs> um, and then we cut backstage to the Good Brothers beating up Penta El Zero Miedo. I was like, whoa. So I think that's part of the business that they remember on Impact. They said we got some business in Jacksonville we need to take care of. And this is it. Being a Penta, uh, uh, I was going to say Pentagon, but Penta is a Romero. So uh, they're beating him up. And right before the, or during the main event, we see the announcement that next week's going to be Moxley, Pog, and Pentagon taking on the Good Brothers and Kenny Omega next week. So, or no, excuse me, that's going to be the main event for uh, the beach, beach Batch, I think it is. Uh, but anyway, dude, I'm super looking forward to that. It's going to be a great matchup. All right, main event time. So it's the battle of all of Inner Circle. Uh, <laughs> we see, uh, let's see, Chris Jericho and MJF taking on Sammy Guevara and Jake Hager and also uh, uh, Santana Ortiz. Like before the match, they had Sammy Hagar cut a little video. So, Philip, you got to see Sammy Hagar, which is reference to the joke last week when uh, Sammy Guevara says it's gonna be me and Hager, Sammy and Hager, Sammy and Hager. And Chris Jericho says you're gonna be Sammy Hager, and he's like, "Who's that?" And he says, "Never mind." <laughs> so reference to Sammy Hagar, the Red Rocker. So you got to see the video of him. That was very cool. They cut a little video and got uh, Sammy Hagar on the show this week, and so that was very cool. Uh, but yeah, what you think of this main event here? Oh, uh, well, cut off quick. Um, <laughs> I mean, you you kind of going into it. You kind of knew that. Uh. That um, Le Champion, our good buddy Chris Jericho, and Maxwell Jacob Friedman would win this. So, what happens to Proud and Powerful now, man? What happens to Sammy Hagar? I don't know, man. It's um, so we see MJF roll up Sammy for the victory. I was gonna say Sammy Guevara, dude. This match, he was working like a baby face as far as the high flying and and, and just his work, the work ethic he was putting into this match kind of going nonstop. It was pretty incredible. And even earlier in the night when MJF went into the locker room to talk to the rest of the guys at Inner Circle and says, listen, I know we don't want to do this, but we got to do it because Chris said so. Do you think MJF is trying to persuade the other guys at Inner Circle to turn on Chris Jericho? I don't know. That'd be interesting. Could we could we have a baby face Chris Jericho? Like, yeah. Could, could, he, could he be the Lionheart in 2021? See, that's what I'm wondering. It's like, could... MGF turned the inner circle against Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho goes babyface. Sam Guevara also leaves and goes babyface as well. And then uh, MGF keeps the rest of the members for himself. I don't know. That's going to be really interesting. But this match, it looked like they were pressed for time. I just noticed at the very end, they were kind of like getting a lot of spots in. And then, yeah, like I said, I turned my head and I didn't see the roll up from MGF rolling up Sam Guevara. I just saw that they won. And then the screen went black. So it looks like they were pressed for time, ran out of time. So, um, you know, it was unfortunate when something happens like very rushed like that. It just you you can't like sell the victory and like the aftermath of it all. So uh, maybe, you know, maybe they'll do some like online exclusive like on social media. It's like, here's what happened after the cameras went off the air or something like that. But um, but yeah, so MGF and Chris Jericho are going to be the official tag team. For the inner circle so yeah as you said what happens with santana ortiz they are the original tag team that was brought into the inner circle so what they got to be single go join the now? family man go join the family i that would be kind of cool man to get 
realign themselves with Eddie Kingston somehow. I think maybe that's a story that's coming up in the near future. Maybe the inner circle falls apart completely with this. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know, man, but no, it, it was kind of a little bit wonky finish being really uh, 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 abrupt like that. So anyway, I'm, um, you know, not the best episode of AEW Dynamite tonight. Like I said, top of the show, kind of bum. I missed all the inauguration partying going on TV for this episode, but um, not the best one. And uh, hopefully things get better on next week's episode of Dynamite, man. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <sighs> We'll see. I know. I'm just kind of like, I'm just over it already. It was like a little bit of a disappointment.